So the game is called Exposure. It's predominantly a platformer game, and it's called Exposure because it's about exposure therapy, which is a treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, exposure therapy involves confronting the traumatic events by talking about them. The levels are Blake's, our main character, and they're his way of retelling his time at war. The levels begin in a therapy session between Blake and his therapist. This is where the theme of the game is introduced in the therapy session, so we'll get to that in a second. First we'll just look at the how to play screen. So here's Blake, our main character, that's a profile view, uh, drawn by Dennis. And you guide Blake through his flashbacks, so the action is done through the game in flashback form, and you play through them as a memory. So let's go main menu, and we'll go to new game, we'll just start right up. So there's our therapist, Allison, to the left, and the main character, Blake, to the right. So we'll just look through some text for now. So now Black is going to recount his flashback. So it's predominantly a platformer game. You move from left to right. There are enemies that patrol. And um, during this playthrough, I'm just going to play through the entire game uh, because it's not very long. Such a short time. But I'll try and show off some of the dramatic and formal elements to make this game fun and really playable. So I'll actually just die once so we can figure out what it's like to die. So I'm getting sharp, I'll explain more about what's happening in the So as you can see, because he had such trouble going through the flashback, he couldn't relive the situation. And so that is the kind of death screen or death scenario. Is that when you get killed, there's too much trauma going on, and so doesn't expose himself to his own memories, and therefore doesn't get over post-traumatic stress disorder. So let's just try again. Now I'll go through a proper walkthrough. So we've got parallax from the background, and all kinds of fantastic graphics. Sound effects are fantastic. Like the, we've got completely automatic rifle sounds, and enemies recognize you when you make that noises near them. You can shoot, but it's not like that. See, I'm almost dying. You can see the health on the top left, it's bar, but also we've got the dramatic element of a black kind of darker border that comes around the screen when you're low in health. To because we, oh, well, we were having players not really understand that they were running out of health just by being represented here. So by displaying it over the whole screen with an overlay, it just gives it more impact when you're running out of health because you can actually you can see it all around you. So no matter where your eye is on the screen, you can always see it. So here's the part where I get good at the game. Hopefully. There's a health pack. That helps. There are all kinds of pickups through the levels, so there's an ammo pack and a health pack. Oh, and to finish the level, you progress through a door at the end. So we'll do that. And we'll fade to the second level. We've got actually some dust clouds going in the front as well. Let's mention that they go in front of the players. Because it's a platformer game, if you're smart, you see the level layout. You can avoid some enemies. So there's an element of strategy to it. Also, avo avoiding the vision of enemies is interesting because they patrol left and right. So if you time your jumps properly, you can actually just avoid them altogether, like I'm about to do. Some cannot be avoided though, like this guy's probably the same. That guy's already seen me. Something might take him out before that. You have my one shot. Let's see if we can take both these guys out. Sweet. This is the second therapy session, so he's successfully recounted his experience, and she's going to congratulate him on him, because now he's one step closer to be, being over his dis disorder. 
and this is explained through the text, obviously. And so continuing in the therapy, we'll go through another flashback in our memory. The difficulty is higher as the levels go through, as you can see, more enemies in the start. Smart all of a sudden. <laughs> oh. That's another recurring feature about the levels is that as they get harder and more, you can start close to you. So also, another really interesting thing to know is that when enemies die, they drop their weapons. So they kill them. So you can kind of see his rifle next to his body. Anyway, when you pick them up, you get another clip. So I'll walk over the bodies now and just get them on that clip on there. Okay, so there you go. So I've got one around. Some trees, they are probably worth a pound. We had a feature where you could shoot them in the head and they would die instantly, but it made the game too easy because um, it was just way too easy to aim for them and then one shot kills when they hit them in the head. It's just Every level is just a fork and a And here is the one of the last therapy sessions. And the therapy begins to work. He says he's worried about um, his reputation in his career. This is actually like one of the key things about post-traumatic stress disorder because um People who suffer, suffer from it in war often really, really don't like to talk about it because it's shown as a sign of weakness to have any problem with the things you've done to other people. But killing people and seeing your friends die is a terrible, terrible thing. So it's perfectly human not to kind of get over it immediately or even at all. So one of the worries is that maybe some people in high-ranking military positions do suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder but are just in denial about it. But there's no way to prove that and that's one of those issues that's just in, in the world. So it's kind of what this game is trying to raise, raise awareness about this. Uh, all the graphics in the game are original, except for some of the more, the more realistic looking uh, trees and some of the other boxes and stuff. But all the sprites, moving, walking guns are original. The engine was taken from a guy named Crispy, who were extremely comfortable. The enemies do notice you as well, the AI is pretty intelligent for some of main works, so... They do have line of sight with you and there are collateral objects, so they can't see you behind a wall, etc. So this, I believe, is the last level. As you can see, two enemies spawning in plain sight. Hopefully I won't die, but that would be pretty bad. Because <laughs> I'll probably have to start the video all over again, but that's all happens. Sound is so good. All of the sounds in the game we've done on the all on the Creative Commons. It's pretty fun. It's royalty free. From royalty free websites and stuff. They all buy them. Oh god, I'm about to die. No. No, I can't. I'll get that help out. Close. Close. So that bit's pretty true. Okay. I'll go through. Yay! So we've successfully confronted our fears and maybe not overcome post-traumatic stress disorder, but we've certainly we're on the path to it.